Hmm. A conceptual thing. It works. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Kulorsson. I am the uh, I'm a composer and musician, and I'm also the president of the Swedish Society of Composers and of the Nordic Composers Council. And I'm in the board of STIM, the Swedish uh, Performance Rights, Rights Society. And I'm going to try a new concept, so I'm as terrified as you. Um, and we'll see. This works, yes. Uh, up to this date, the normal way to present art music was to present contemporary music, new music written specially for the concert. But in 1829, Felix Mendelssohn uh, introduced the music of Johann Sebastian Bach to the audience in the Matthew Passion in Berlin. And since then, the normal has been to present old music. Can we hear, uh, just hands up, how many in here has been to a concert with contemporary music ever? Everyone, wonderful. I was wrong, it's not an example. How many in here can name three Swedish or Norwegian or Danish living composers? Hands up. Oh, that's not as many. <laughs> well, you can name one now. I'm Martin. For, for the future. So we have some problems. We have the con preconception that contemporary music is inaccessible. It's not uh, ordinary people cannot listen to it. It's super nerd music only for super educated super nerds. And that's why you can't listen to it. But uh, the second problem we have, it's that you have to be a detective to find a place where it's played. Uh, you have to have secret information to find a little cellar or odd theater where they play music. And if you happen to go to a concert hall, you find that only 10% of the music is uh, contemporary. The rest is usually uh, made by dead people from Germany. Dead men from Germany, I should say, as well. Uh, and the third thing is that if you happen to come to one of these concerts, you realize there's a lot of unwritten rules, and do I really behave? And uh, one of the first things that happens is that everyone turns their heads and wonder, who is that? How did he come here, or she? And there's a, uh, there's a, a story about how do you know if you're paranoid? That's if you're at a contemporary music uh, concert and you feel someone is sitting behind you. So, we have to go to where the audience is. We have to see where they are. And if you listen to these, you can quickly scribe down these websites, and you can find this is what contemporary music sounds like. And the only thing I can say about today's music is that it's extremely diverse. The second thing we have to do is that uh, it's so unusual, so we have to go where the audience is. And the festival Sound of Stockholm, that's next week in Stockholm, is in the Culture House in the center of Stockholm. We must also urge for the concert halls that cost about two billion Swedish kronos a year to take the responsibility and present some music or a little more music. That is how we do it. We have to change the way we present music because all of us are also super duper nerds and we have to communicate to people who are not super nerds. And we have to think about, like Christine said this morning, this afternoon, why do we do it? What do we, do we want to achieve and who do we want to reach? In order to find this, we in the uh, Nordic Music Days uh, organization, we want to follow the five commandments. Catch me, know me, connect me, surprise me, and make me feel. Five ways to find the way to reach the audience. We think the audience are explorers. There's people who are not essentially interested in music or drama or theater or, or art, uh, visual art, but they are interested in music. The first thing we have to do is to make, uh, uh, make them feel invited. We must make them feel welcome and uh, 
feel that they, they belong there in the concert hall or concert venue or whatever it is. And we must translate the information about the music to non-nerd non language. <coughs> we have to, when you come to concert, you have to feel safe that you actually belong there. You have to feel comfortable that you can you understand immediately where you can sit and where you're allowed to clap and, and things. Or feel that it's possible to do. And the audience must feel smart. You must feel intelligent. Not, uh, because often when, when you have people like me speaking, you feel just stupid. Where it's, in fact, it's me stupid. Uh, so, we're going to present the Nordic Music Days at South Bank Centre in London, in, in the framework of the Nordic uh, Minister of Councils uh, there. And we're going to do it in the end of September. We're going to present music by now living Nordic uh, composers, including Faroe Islands and, the Green, and Greenland. We're going to use three different strands of how we do it. We're going to have acoustical concerts, we're going to have electronical concerts and clubbing, and we're going to have lots of workshops with young and old, and workshops with grown-ups and kids, and with professionals and amateurs, and musicians and composers. We have heard that in... in uh, yeah, okay, sorry. We're going to use, because everything Nordic is so uh, popular in London and Great Britain, Nordic crime, Nordic uh, drama, Nordic noir, and we're going to ride on that wave. We're going to have focus groups, we're going to have schools, we're, we're going to have uh, an interactive machine. We're going to have a fireworks of Nordic contemporary music in London. And uh, we and when you okay so from the leading perspective, what happens? Well, you know we, we tried that once and it didn't work. Uh, okay, w when was that? I was 1982. It's dead end. Don't do it. Or no, it's too expensive to go to London. Well, it costs the same to go to Gothenburg. Yeah, but it's very far away. Don't do it. And actually, we don't do it that way, because the audience doesn't want that. And the artists doesn't want it. It, it uh, disturbs the artistic process, and actually society doesn't want it at all. So, if you take one advice, don't go there. Do it as you usually do it, the ordinary way. This is the world's oldest contemporary music festival. So, why? Why do we want to present music? Why do we want to compose music? And why do we want to perform music? Why do we need an audience? Why do we need to have press? In our view, it's a matter of survival of an art form. I'll let you dive on that for more. <laughs> this is really a weird call. Oh, here it comes. Sorry. <laughs> Because we want the success, we want to be loved by everyone, especially the new audience that we have uh, found in, in, uh, in Britain. And, but we have to also think, uh, how do we know if it was a success? What do we want to achieve? And if we achieve it, how do we know we actually did achieve that? It's very important that we d discover first why we do things and then start doing them. And this is a, a little sketch of how it will be performed. <laughs> we will use a lot of pop-up concerts. We will use spaces, in-between spaces, closed spaces, uh, things that uh, w places where audiences are not usually allowed, and where they are allowed, of course, in cafes. And we're going to be outdoors, and we want to be on the roof. We want to be on, on the uh, canal. We, but we're going to have ordinary concerts also, where people are actually sitting and paying a, paying a fee and having just uh, music all the time. Very carefully introduced in a good way, so everyone feels happy and smart and welcome. We're going to have uh, electronic clubbing, we're going to have electronic concerts, we're going to have workshops, 
with you see the green one is an adult and the blue ones are children. <laughs> uh, we're going to have workshops with children in schools. We're going to have workshops with grown-ups trying to compose music, because in my view, it's not harder to compose music than to play a piano. Everyone can make a piano sound, but it takes seven years of education and 20 years of experience to make it sound the way you like it. And we're going to have uh, uh, interactive music machines. We're going to have outdoor flash mobs events. And you can see the, the purple line here is a lot of tourists walking along the Thames River. And you can see the green line is uh, a lot of commuters going past. And the, the thing to the, to the right is uh, an interactive machine. So, in all together, we think this will be a new start for contemporary music in general, and the Nordic countries taking the lead. And we're going back to normal, where the normal is that you present music by now living composers. And we hope that this will be the thing that you will work for. In order to see how it works, go to London, follow us at nordicmusicdays.com or me at fst.se. Uh, I will unfortunately not be here because I'm going to London this evening, but we have a guy called Johan. Johan, can you rise? Johan, all questions, he can answer them or he can call me. <laughs> so don't forget his face. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>